Cape Town City Mission Homes, winning the race. Few people would deny that we live in troubled times. Never before has there been so much hurt and suffering in the world. Daily, people face starvation, loneliness and social rejection, as many lead lives of destitution and survival. Are we affected by this? We should be. Statistically, Cape Town is one of the most violent cities in the world, along with Los Angeles and New York. On our very doorstep is a sociological disaster. But as each day dawns, the rat race goes on, leaving in its wake the innocent and weak to become the casualties of our city. Every day, souls are lost, people suffer, and children die. And yet, how little some people seem to care. We at Cape Town City Mission Homes believe that the Lord has called us to be athletes, to run the race against time, to run the race against sin and darkness. Won't you join us as we persevere and press on towards our goal? Cape Town City Mission Homes was established in 1972 with its first home for children in need of care. Bruce Duncan House and the recently established G.C. Williams House has catered for hundreds of destitute boys. Currently, there are 140 boys in residential care at these two homes. Many of the boys come from extremely deprived social backgrounds, with experiences of alcohol and poverty as their only recollection of home life. On entering the home, many experience love and security for the first time. The staff at the homes provide important parental role models for the children, as they are given every opportunity of putting their lives together again. Mr. Archie Benjamin, trustee and chairman of the child care department, elaborates on the role played by the staff in the lives of the children. The first function is that of a substitute parent or guardian. Secondly, that of an adult role model. But above all, the Christian foundation that has been set by the example of the staff members to put our children in good stead for the future. Life is seldom without a crisis as the children grapple with social adaptation, puberty and enormous peer pressure. The staff regard their contribution as a calling from God, as they play a major role in reshaping these young lives. The administrative challenges in running Bruce Duncan House and G.C. Williams House is enormous. The boys attend a total of 12 schools and are encouraged to get involved in extracurricular activities. Many student volunteers from the YMCA and UCT assist with homework and extra lessons, while outside sport bodies cater for recreational needs. The boys often attend Christian camps hosted by churches and youth organizations. These outings provide a very necessary balance for mental, spiritual and social development. Mrs. Velma Benjamin and Mr. Viveros happily fulfill the role of mother and father to these children. I firmly believe that they need discipline, they need guidelines, and it is by this that they will grow and develop. By giving them love and guiding them, they become secure, and they know who they are, and they know where they're going to. I would never like to change this job of mine because I firmly believe it is a calling from God to minister to these hurting children. Being father to 65 boys is very rewarding. However, sometimes when we see the damage that has been done in the boys in their formative years, it can often result in some rather difficult behavior, which is sometimes difficult to handle. However, when we see a boy respond to the gospel and to the love and the security that the staff offer him, um, we can truly say that it's been worth it all. The inevitable costs of medical care are a great burden. 
some dental treatment and the occasional hospital fee all add to the heavy annual cost of keeping this large family healthy. The Lord has always been faithful in providing for the vast and divergent needs over the past 20 years. It's this knowledge of the Lord's faithfulness which motivates the staff at these two homes to continue their labor of love among the needy children of our city. Cape Town City Mission Homes subscribes to a policy of holistic care when it comes to the development and caring of the teenagers in their custody. This attitude extends beyond the school years to further education at college or university. Students falling into this category can be accommodated at Archie's Place. Archie's Place takes the form of a flat adjoining the G.H. Stark Center located in Hanover Park. From here, students are free to pursue their studies and are more independent as they prepare for the responsibilities of adult life. Even these students, however, are never far from loving attention, as Mr. Charles Kadali, manager of Archie's Place, explains. Archie's Place provides accommodation for boys coming from Bruce Duncan House and G.C. Williams. Now, these boys want to go further with tertiary education. We do uh, have group sessions where we try and develop a sound interpersonal relationship as a group and as individuals. And with all the boys coming from, through Bruce Duncan House and, and G.C. Williams, we see a definite need to further this type of facility for them. The growing economic pressures on family life over the past decade has resulted in an ever-increasing percentage of mothers entering the workplace and following full-time careers. This, in turn, has created a growing demand for childcare centers, creches, and educare centers. Cape Town City Mission Homes has responded to this need in the form of the Colin John Campbell Educare Center, situated in the Bridgetown area. The center currently caters for 68 children between the ages of three and five years old. For the five teachers at the center, each day holds new challenges as teaching methods and applications need to be dynamic, effective, and relevant. Heading up this special team is Mrs. Lawrence, who is never at a loss for words on the center's merits and activities. Colin John Campbell Educare Center is a special place because the children from the community, as well as the different homes, find security here and teachers and children build relationships together whilst doing activities during the day. And through this, we are able to bring the gospel to them, and this makes Colin John Campbell such a special place. As society faces the challenges of the 90s and pressures on family life increase, Cape Town City Mission Homes are determined to be part of God's solution throughout Cape Town. The growth of the Colin John Campbell Educare Centre since 1988 is proof of this. Few sights can be sadder than to see a huddled gathering of cold and hungry street children. Sadder still is the fact that few people seem to care about the plight of these abandoned children as they beg at the nearby robot or parking lot. Here too, the Lord has called city mission homes to be his instrument of love in the face of desperate need. It's estimated that there are currently more than 200 street children on the streets of Cape Town every night. Kid Shelter was started in 1990 in an attempt to cater for the growing numbers of street children in the Lavender Hill area. Lavender Hill is an extremely violent area of our city, reflecting the hurt and frustrations of a disadvantaged and suppressed people. Unemployment, violence and gangsterism form the backdrop to the work at Kid Shelter, where 25 boys are currently cared for. On admission, the children are immediately placed in a school and given the chance of acquiring a formal education. Sadly, however, without a place like Kid Shelter, the price of a desperate lifestyle is paid at a very early age. 
and many of the boys are not able to catch up with the loss of parental guidance and support. As a result, many grow up into gang life, drugs and crime, and are sadly lost to themselves and society. Mr. Hendricks shares his heart for the kid shelter boys. The area Lavendale has got a very big unemployment rate where we find mothers has got to work to keep the families going. Once the boys come home, they come to an empty house. Then they take to the streets where they get involved with drugs and other crimes. They are then placed legally here through the courts. Once the boys come to kid shelter, we place them into the local schools. We also bring the gospel across to them, to which they respond very well. For the staff at kid shelter, one commandment stands clear. Jesus said, For as much as you have done this to any one of these, you have done so unto me. Dial 2611100 and you're through to Safeline's 24-hour crisis line. Safeline was born in 1988 in answer to the growing number of reported child abuse cases in the Cape Town area. Since its inception, literally thousands of telephone calls for help have been received. Figures for 1991 have averaged 747 calls per month, covering a full spectrum of incidents. Counseling and follow-up in all cases is of prime importance and forms the foundation of Safeline's success. Safeline employs a unit manager, three qualified social workers, an education worker, and many volunteers, both professional and lay. All staff go through a stringent training program specializing in child abuse counseling. Safeline have identified the child abuse cycle underlying most abuse cases. Correct counseling and follow-up breaks this cycle and in 98% of recent cases has led to complete rehabilitations. Counseling and fulfilling the link person function therefore plays a fundamental role in Safeline's daily task. Community education programs are also held on a regular basis along with talks at schools, churches and clubs all with the aim of educating and preventing the growth of this heinous violation of children's rights. Safeline hosts a weekly radio program on child abuse as part of its commitment to dealing with this social crime. A publication on child abuse is now also available on request, with the hope that this too will assist in combating what is now a growing problem. Mrs. Marcel Lott, Safeline's unit manager, comments on the growing need for Safeline services. We know that in South Africa families have been subjected to many pressures ranging from socio-political, moral, financial. There's been a lot of changes they've had to contend with and one of the ways this has impacted on the ability to function and to provide safety for their children has been problems like incest, like sexual abuse. Um, because of this, we've seen a dramatic increase in statistics gathered over the past year. We have had to develop services that are family-oriented, services that provide support to the whole family, services that are not fragmented and that are not inconsistent. We believe that we can contain families in this kind of program, and we have contained many families. We run groups for wives, for children, for the offenders. We provide individual counseling when that's needed. So the whole range of services are geared to the needs of the family and the pressures they are faced. The number of abuse cases reported by women and the increasing incidence of wife battering over the past decade is of grave concern. Experts ascribe these trends to the growing social and economic pressures on relationships and modern family life. Since as early as 1976, Cape Town City Mission Homes has responded to this need in the community through the formation of A.W. Baker House, situated in the heart of Athlow. The home provides residential facilities for ladies in distress and for young students furthering their education, 
while also running a shelter for battered wives and their children. Under the parental care of the Reverend and Mrs. Fenner Kadani, A.W. Baker House has provided a second home to hundreds of ladies over the past few years. Currently, 70 ladies are accommodated, providing for full accommodation and meals. Many sad cases of distress and abuse form the backdrop to A.W. Baker House and its unique ministry. As Reverend Fenner Kadali explains. The A.W. Baker House is an international setting, a home from home for many young ladies. I have come to Cape Town to further their education and uh, many of them have graduated in the field of education and professional uh, uh, services. Uh, we also have ladies in distress and wife, uh, battered wives that have come to our place and uh, it's a, a secure haven for many of them. We also have uh, the gospel services on the Monday night which has helped many of these ladies to find uh, a real commitment in life and uh, they've gone from this place with a new hope uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. For many of the ladies, A.W. Baker House has meant a new start in life, both spiritually and socially. Many have left the home after graduating from college or university. But more importantly, like in the other departments, many leave having found a new meaning in life through the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1982, the G.H. Stark Centre was established as a residential home for senior citizens. Included in the facility is a mini hospice, providing frail care for the terminally ill. Since its foundation, the centre has been a haven of love and companionship, as many elderly folk have found new meaning and strength in their twilight years. The atmosphere of the G.H. Stark Centre is always happy and victorious, with many opportunities to share and worship in a genuine spirit of Christian fellowship. Sadly, this stands in sharp contrast to the growing battered granny syndrome, which is emerging in many sectors of our society. The advent of the nuclear family has left many elderly people feeling abused and rejected. Smaller homes and higher costs have contributed sharply towards the idea that old people are a problem sector in society. Rapid social change has left many of these old people vulnerable to muggings, evictions and other forms of abuse, while the cost of institutional care has risen sharply. Seen in this light, the G.H. Stark Centre has a unique contribution to make in uplifting and enhancing the lives of their elderly residents. G.H. Stark Centre is committed to providing care that will enhance the quality of lives of our residents the care and activities program is designed in such a way that it will meet our residents' physical, spiritual, social and uh, recreational needs. We are careful to avoid the risk of reducing our residents to just passive recipients of care by encouraging them to utilize their skills, their past experiences and their present ability uh, to benefit the lives of others. The Ministry of Cape Town City Mission Homes is nothing short of dynamic and is ideally positioned to meet the increasing social and spiritual needs across our city. Future projects include the completion of the Salt River Service Centre, housing a drug counselling unit, an educare centre and a marriage guidance office. Expansion in the aged and frail care department includes Val's Place, a community daycare centre planned for the aged and homeless in the Hanover Park area. The Margaret Campbell Baby Care Centre is almost a reality and will provide daycare facilities for babies in the Aslone area. Another street children's project is being planned for the near future, while a new addition to the family in the form of the Percy Bartley Centre for Young Men in Woodstock is being finalised. We are excited about what the Lord is doing through Cape Town City Mission Homes. We want you to get excited as well and to join the team in pressing towards the mark. We have heard the Lord's call to ministry in our city. 
We are running the race set before us, and we will win the prize. But like any marathon athlete, we need supporters along the way. And in particular, we need your support. We are a team, and together we will triumph. How can you get involved? Supplied with this video are response cards. Please indicate prayerfully on one of these how you would like to become part of the Lord's solution to our city. We are excited to hear from you, and we know that with your support, we will wear the victor's crown.